Hello, my name is Randall Weatherington, and I'm going to show you how to heat water with just a one foot by two foot piece of material. The key to doing this is the concentrated reflection of sunlight. A reflective material is going to be curved into the shape of a parabolic reflector that will concentrate the reflected sunlight onto a copper pipe. Will this work? Watch! I built a simple demonstration device which shows just how effective concentrated sunlight can be. For this demonstration unit, I use the following items. A two foot long copper pipe with one each of male and female pipe fittings to go onto each end of the pipe. A ball valve to go in between the pipe and male fitting at one end of the pipe. Pipe retaining clamps and screws to go with them. Wood to keep the pipe in place and to keep the reflector curve accurate. Flexible reflector material and a stainless steel sheet metal backing to keep the reflector rigid enough to conform to the parabolic curve. The fittings are sweat soldered onto the pipe. At one end of the pipe, a ball valve is attached. When closed, the valve prevents the water in the pipe from flowing, or in our demonstration, it prevents the water from draining out of the pipe. The lever allows the ball valve to be opened very quickly for passage or drainage of the water. A standard male threaded pipe fitting is attached to the outside of the ball valve to allow the heater to be attached to additional plumbing. At the other end of the pipe is a standard female threaded pipe fitting. This fitting allows the heater to be connected to additional plumbing to complete the system. For the purposes of our demonstration, this end of the pipe will remain open. In order for the sunlight to be accurately focused, a proper parabolic curve must be generated for the reflector. Parabolic curves can easily be found on the internet and printed out. When printing out the curve, make sure that the printer has not elongated or compressed the curve in order to fit the printed image to the paper. Elongation or compression of the printed curve will cause the reflector to not focus properly. Once the parabolic pattern has been printed out, checked for proper curve and carefully cut, it can be traced onto the wood which will be cut out and used as support blocks for the pipe. Both the reflective material and the sheet metal backing are cut to the same one foot by two feet dimensions and fitted to the wood forms. In order to conform to the proper parabolic curve, the reflector support must be fastened by screws in a closely spaced pattern. Too much distance between the screws may cause the backing to relax slightly, disrupting the curve of the reflector. The copper pipe is secured firmly to the carrier block. It is important that everything be firmly fastened. Looseness can cause handling problems, and even with this small scale demonstration unit, devices that are capable of doing what this does need to be overbuilt. In this shot, even though the camera is not directly face on to the heater, it clearly shows the bottom of the pipe in the reflector. Even though the heater is oriented vertically, this shot shows us that if the length of the pipe stays aligned with the path the sun follows across the sky, no adjustment will be necessary throughout the day. Intentionally left dirty, we can also see how much sunlight can be robbed from the system by not making sure the reflector is clean. As we can see here, if the reflector is rotated away from the path of the sun, Focusing the rays of the sun on the pipe will be lost. With the trough aligned horizontally to the path of the sun's arc across the sky, no further adjustment will be necessary throughout the day. However, the arc of the sun across the sky moves northward between December 21st and June 21st during the first part of each year. The sun's arc also moves southward between June 21st and December 21st during the latter half of the year. Alignment of the latitude angle of the heater may last for a few days, but in order to maximize the efficiency, some way should be provided to easily change the angle. For this demonstration, we are standing the heater upright in a vertical orientation in order to retain water in the open pipe. We fill the pipe completely to the top with water. Capacity of the pipe in this demonstration unit is one half cup of water. We selected an electronic cooking thermometer as it can resolve to tenths of a degree and is clearly readable. Here it is showing the outside ambient air temperature in the shade. The heater is carefully aimed at the sun so that the maximum concentration of sunlight can be focused onto the pipe. 
With a stopwatch included in the shot, we can see that it is taking approximately six seconds for the water temperature to rise each degree, very fast indeed. As we can see in this shot, the underside of the pipe is illuminated by the concentrated sunlight from the reflector much brighter than the front side of the pipe. Because the sunlight concentrated onto the pipe heats it along the entire length of the pipe, nowhere is this pipe going to be cool enough to touch without being burnt. There is a tendency to want to grab the pipe and use it like a handle. Rethink this, and even though it does not glow, consider the pipe the same as a red-hot branding iron and treat it as such. If you think it looks hot, it is. Caution, this water heater gets very hot. In fact, this heater has reached 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the boiling point of water. Keep this very much in mind at all times when making and using devices of this type. Yes, it really does work. It is important to note that for a full-scale working solar water heater, the pipe needs to be protected from any kind of wind in order to reach maximum temperature. Any air blowing across the pipe will lower the temperature dramatically. Normally, this entire unit would be mounted in an enclosure with glass over the front except for a slight breeze blowing across the pipe, this demonstration would have reached the boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Even though the temperature is less than one degree below boiling, the water is still hot enough to generate steam. With the thermometer removed, we can see the steam and boiling water escaping from the pipe. When finished, be careful draining the water from the pipe. It is still very hot. A portion of the water that was in the pipe did boil out, leaving the amount of remaining water to only one-third of a cup. It is not within the scope of this video to discuss the ways this technology can be incorporated. We will save that for videos that specifically address those topics. If this basic, simple technology is so easy, then why is it not in use by everybody? There are three words that strike fear into a lot of people. Some assembly required. Some assembly may be required, but in order to incorporate this technology into a habitable domain, certain building codes must also be met. If this is too much for the do-it-yourselfer, commercially produced systems can be purchased and installed. Yes, there may be a sizable upfront investment, but if everybody gets past the sticker shock and looks at the return on investment, they will see that a substantial savings can pay off sooner rather than later. I'm Randall Weatherington. Thank you for watching and please check out our other videos.